Hello, welcome to Stillburn Intuitive Tarot. Thank you very, very much for being here. Today is going to be a channeled message. So, you know, last week we had the 34 um, guilty count conclusion of that trial in New York. And, you know, I think by and large, most of us are all really happy about it. And we'll wait and see what the sentencing uh, situation looks like. It was interesting to, to, to sort of hear people talking about it and talking about how when the judge is, is sorting out sentencing, um, he can take everything, everything, everything into consideration. So he can take into consideration any previous bad acts. He can take into consideration uh, his behavior. He can take into consideration all the lovely and supportive things about how much he trusts and believes in the judicial system. <clears throat> so he's not making it better for himself. I mean, if he would just be quiet, but not only is he being not being quiet, but you have, you know, Republicans not being quiet either. Um, and so it's going to be interesting to see sort of how that plays out and and honestly what that dynamic looks like between you know sort of now so where are we at the very 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 beginning of june to july 11th i mean that's like six weeks so that's going to be interesting to see you know if if trump's behavior is modified or if it just continues to sort of go you know out of control so there's like that's kind of that. So that's gonna be sort of interesting to watch, you know, from from a distance. And speaking of a distance, um, for most of you, you may know or not know that I am Canadian. And one of the small perks, if you will, of Trump's convict conviction is he's actually now not allowed to enter Canada. <laughs> So if he wants to visit, I don't think he can do that. I mean, right now he doesn't even have a passport, but just because there's a conviction, he, he can't enter our borders, which is, frankly, you know what I mean? I feel sorry for you guys in the States, but kind of nice out here. We have our own idiot in Ottawa who wants to be a Trump wannabe, so don't even get me started on that. Today, I want to take a look at the Supreme Court. They have become... So emboldened, so entitled, um, you know, no, Alito's not going to recuse himself. And no, Justice Roberts doesn't have anything to say to anybody about it. And it's just, you know, and then there's Thomas. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's sad. All right. It's a little depressing that you have this highest, highest court in the land that truly has been kidnapped by very, very um, conservative justices. And, you know, when you're talking conservative, we're not excluding particularly uh, Kavanaugh and Gorsuch because they also are, you know, of that sort of same mindset. But I, I thought, you know, and, and in some ways it feels like the, um, the Congress doesn't have a whole lot of options. I mean, they need to get something in place, but that's not going to happen until they have more votes, right, until they have the House and they have a bigger majority in the Senate. So let's take a look at the Supreme Court. And let's see if we can get some clarity on what's going on, what is likely to go on, um, that kind of thing. I do remember a few readings ago mentioning that um, it felt very much like one of the um, judges on the Supreme Court was going to be, in fact, embroiled in another um, scandal. And of course, we have the whole flag situation with Alito and his wife. I love the way that he just blames his wife for everything, honestly. Um, such a man. Such a man. Okay. You know, he's strong and he protects his women vote. I'm sorry, don't even get me started. It just pisses me off. 
It's like, you know, you want the whole country to be conservative. You don't want women to have autonomy over their bodies. You, you know, want everything to go back to the 1950s. But God help you when somebody questions why there's a flag flying upside down on your property. Oh, it's not me. It's my wife. It's just disgusting. Here we go. Spirit, can you give us some clarity and some insight on the United States Supreme Court? It just... I think we all need um, sort of some clarity about what's going on there, what we can anticipate, and and honestly, you know, how how, how does this thing get corrected? So, as um, insane as this next statement may seem. I'm being told that that whole flag thing is not going to be sort of the last scandal um, that we hear about the Supreme Court over the next couple of months. So, you know, moving through the summertime, um, it feels like, in fact, there could be another one or two scandals. And I mean, a lot of this, of course, is, is you know, um, amazing, amazing um, investigative reporting, you know, by journalists. I mean, they are like, you know, a dog with a bone, right? They are not letting this go, and nor should they. So it feels as if there's going to be yet even more pressure exerted on the Supreme Court. There is going to be more outrage and indignation. And you know, I, I know that Biden at some point last week made a statement about, you know, how he expects that he will be replacing a couple of um, justices on the Supreme Court in, the, in his next term, just, you know, kind of based on their age. I don't know that that's the right argument, considering, you know, he's not exactly um, a young man himself. And he certainly isn't having any problem wanting to be in the White House for another four years. So, it, it but it does feel... Like, there are going to be shifts and changes, but I hate to say this, right now, as things stand, it feels as if the powers, the conservative powers that be, okay, so whether you're talking, you know, Leonard Leo or, or, or the Heritage Society or whatever they're called, um, where they're at, right? I mean, these are not dumb people, okay? These are people who can read the writing on the wall. And they are quite aware of the sort of pushback and the backlash that is happening because of the, the behavior of the Supreme Court and some of the decisions that have been made. And what you're going to find over the next few months is that the Supreme Court is going to attempt to push everything through on their wish list that they possibly have in front of them. So expect rulings that by and large are not going to be well received. They, you know, it's like um, they know that there's going to be changes coming to the Supreme Court. They know that their rulings have not been in keeping, in sync with the vast majority of Americans. They don't care about that. They only care about Americans like them, you know, white, Christian um, Americans who, you know, have this kind of very traveling back in, you know, time travel backwards to an era that they perceive as so much better, although it actually wasn't so much better. But, you know, uh, we all sort of tend to romanticize the past, I guess. So you can expect some more rulings that just make, you know, your head spin. Some of them are going to be really big deals. The immunity being told that there's going to be an immunity given, it's going to be carved out, um, and that's going to create this whole big thing about, well, was it, was what he did personal or was it under the, you know, the, the 
cover of the presidential office. So, but for them to, they're not going to come back and say he has absolute immunity, but nor are they going to come back and say he doesn't have any special immunity. Um, he's, he's just like everybody else. So you've got, you've got that going on there. And I mean, and frankly, you know, they, um, they're not willing to give up their own power. And they recognize that if you give the president all of this power, he doesn't need court system. He doesn't need a Supreme Court because you guys on the bench kind of made it so that he could actually ignore you along with everything else that he's ignoring, you know, like the Constitution and the rule of law and that kind of stuff. So. Expect to be disappointed, and I'm I'm sorry to be saying that to you because you know me. I always try to find the positive in, in the crazy of the situations, but it just feels like they recognize their days are numbered, and they are going to do everything in their power to get stuff. Um, resolved in a way that is a, 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 a truer reflection, a more accurate reflection, if you will, of the America they envision. Now, it's not going to stay that way, okay? Because what you're going to see is as soon as these sort of rulings come down, you're going to see the opposite start to work its way through the court systems. So that by time, you know, it works its way up to the Supreme Court, the makeup of the Supreme Court has changed. And so um, there isn't going to be this very strict and rigid um, conservative flavor to the court. It's also interesting, you know, there's going to be a fair bit of, um, it, there's one of the, I'm being told it, we're, we're looking at at least at least two justices leaving conservative justices leaving the court one way or another. I don't know whether they're going to get impeached. I don't know whether they're just going to decide to get out of Dodge. It's getting too hot in the kitchen. Uh, I don't know, but I, they're showing me two walking away, but they're also showing me um, one of the um, more liberal Justices, I want to say Sotomayor, Sotomayor, sorry, I really screwed up that pronunciation. Um, I see her stepping down, but under, under the Biden umbrella, right? So um, she's going to be replaced with you know, a younger justice, because that has been part of the problem, right? Is you have these justices who will not leave the dang bench. And so, you know, you have somebody who's 70 and 75 years old, they have a very different view of just a world view than somebody who was 35 or 45 or even 50. So it you know, there's going to be something going on there, but that's not going to upset the apple cart, right? I, all it's going to do is ensure that there is a you know new blood, new blood coming in. Um, you know, we all loved RBJ, okay? RBG, but had she stepped down? Under Obama, which apparently she had been asked to do, that would have at least left one seat that was liberal, as opposed to she died and then, you know, McConnell was able to twist and, and twist things around and maneuver things, even though it didn't apply when Trump was at the end of his term. But what I'm saying is, you know, there needs to be some thought given by a lot of these justices about just how long they're going to stay on the court. And, you know, 
They all want to retire under the judge or the, the president of their power, of, you know, of their party, right? But it, there's definitely um, some shifts and changes that are that are going to be going on. What they're telling me, what they're actually showing me, is that the ener- the energy, the shift, that vibrational shift, the dimension shift, is going to be very become very uncomfortable. For people who um, are really determined to be very rigid in their beliefs, all right? It, it really does feel like it's just, there's going to be energies and pressures that sort of start to come to bear that really make it... Um, I almost want to say that make the, the the judges start to think about, you know, leaving on a high note as opposed to a low note. Um, and so there, there's definitely movement there. It's going to become more and more uncomfortable because, frankly, the more they do this kind of stuff, the more investigative reporting is going on. And they're just telling me right now to look out and watch out because there is something coming down the pike with regards to Kavanaugh. I don't know what it is. They're just saying, you know, um, put a put a bookmark on that because that may very well also be showing itself in the next little while. As after the election, when things are more firmly Democrat, okay you're going to then start seeing some significant shifts and changes in a lot of stuff. Now, listen, we can't expect Biden to to plow through stuff like a steamroller. It's not his style. He's, you know, um, he's all about working together and crossing the aisle. But he also has so much experience that there isn't a whole lot that can be done politically that he isn't sort of savvy to. So you're going to see shifts and changes, whether it is with the judiciary. I mean, let's not forget in other places, like other court systems down below the Supreme Court, he has put in something like more than 200 new judges into the court system of his choice. So, you know, it's being worked on. What's happening is you have that problem at the highest level. And that also is going to ultimately end up getting addressed. As are, there are some outstanding policies um, or situations or concerns that they're not able to make the headway that they want to right now because they just don't have the power. They don't have the numbers. Um, but that is going to shift and change and they're going to be able to move stuff, um, stuff through. So there's a lot of things that, you know, you guys out there have been saying, well, what about this? Or what about that? And and there's voting rights and there's, you know, Roe v. Wade and, and all of that stuff is going to be able to be horse corrected if... They have the numbers after the election. Now, a whole bunch of us readers have all said to you, there's no reason to think that Biden's not going to hold on to the presidency. There's no reason to think that they're, they're going to lose the Senate. There's no reason to think that they're not going to gain the House. But you know what? All of that, of course, is dependent on the people getting out there people becoming involved, people voting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So what you have right now is a core group of justices who are going to continue to be arrogant, who are going to continue to poo-poo any attempts to hold them to account. And you're going to see this push to try to get, um, you know, ruling coming down that are 
more favorable to a more conservative mindset. So, you know, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is you're going to need to brace yourself and not focus on that disappointment, but focus on the fact that you, as the people of the United States, have the power to vote in the kind of change you want to see. One of the things that you're being asked to remember is that there isn't a lot of time between now and the election. Okay, we're at the beginning of June. What, six months and a few weeks? We are going to be, um, you know, Biden will be... Uh, back in office, he will have had his inauguration, etc. So there isn't going to be a long period of time where the impact of some of these rulings, it, like it's not like it's going to go on for years and years and years. Um, and I'm not minimizing for a second the damage some of that can do like let's look at you know the Dobbs decision Roe v. Wade but take comfort from the fact that change within that Supreme Court structure is on the way it is barreling towards those justices whether they can see it or not although when I step into their energy I repeat um they really you know what they're showing me? I can tell you the pictures these guys show me. So have you ever, you know, like this has happened. It's probably happened to all of us, but certainly we. you're going to know what I'm talking about. You, you know, you're sitting at the table and you're eating something. And all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you have to leave right now, like right, right now. And you're kind of like taking that last fork full of food and, and the last shot of coffee or whatever it is and running out the door. That's exactly what they're doing. They're trying to cram in as much stuff as they can before they discover that they have been. Um, made. Unimportant that that they have in fact become redundant to the way the American people want their justice system to work, and it's going to be really quickly. I'm just going to wrap this up because it's going on, but it's going to be really, really important that that kind of healing takes place from the bottom up and from the top down because. The whole Trump situation and the, the sycophants who follow him and just trash the very institutions that they apparently um, were all for for the whole life of the party, except now, um, there's going to be changes coming, all right? Hang in there. And what you're going to find is this, this need for healing kind of across the board, up, down, left, right, because there's been so much damage done just by the, the garbage that comes spewing out of many, many Republicans' mouths. Um, so I'm hoping this is helpful to you. <laughs> It feels a little bit like a bit of a, a kind of a downer, but it's really not. What they're saying is, listen, there might be some some rulings that come down that you're going to be disappointed with, you're not going to be pleased with, but take a deep breath, exhale, move through it, because change is coming, and the change that is coming is going to be permanent, and it is going to be long-lasting, all right? So that's what I know, uh, you know, hopefully you find that helpful. And let's all focus on ensuring that as things go forward in the Supreme Court, 
that arrogant, emboldened attitude becomes a thing of the past. Please don't forget to um, put your questions for Pendulum Friday in the comment section. And uh, for all of you who have made it to the very end of this video, thank you very, very much for your ongoing support. Um, the thumbs up, the comment, they're all so, so, so appreciated. Until next time, you take good care of yourself and be well. Bye-bye for now.